Mr. President, if I may just make of record my explanation of vote. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, tonight, today, the 19th Congress missed an opportunity to show its independence. We failed to demonstrate that we do hold the power of the purse. Mr. President, nagpapasalamat po ako sa mataas na kamera at sa chairperson ng ating Senate Committee on Finance. Salamat po for accepting my amendment in the Senate to realign confidential and intelligence funds in DepEd to specific programs in the department. Ngunit ako ay nalulungkot sa sinapit sa BICAM na ito ay muling ibinalik. Tila naging mapurol at pudpod ang proteksyong binigay sa pondo ng bayan by granting in full all the requests for confidential and intelligence funds under the Marcos Duterte administration. And worse, the legislature agreed to remove provisions that require congressional reporting of the utilization plan and disbursement of the confidential and intelligence fund. In the absence of such provisions, in spite of the Select Oversight Committee on Confidential and Intelligence Funds, how can we be expected to exercise checks and balances? At kung hindi natin makumbinse ang mga kasamahan sa House sa napagkaisahan natin sa Senado, how can we ensure transparency and accountability? Nakapanghihinayang po na sa unang budget ng administrasyon, Congress has shown its malleability to the whims of the administration and has squandered an opportunity offered by the Senate for more transparency and accountability and less opportunities for corruption. Effectively, Congress has abdicated its power of the purse to holders of civilian offices and departments in the executive, setting a precedent for improper budget requests leading up to the elections in 2028. On account of the full restoration of the confidential and intelligence funds, as well as the removal of safeguards on the proper use of the CIFs, I regret, Mr. President, dear colleagues, that I am constrained to vote no to the Bicameral Conference Committee report. Salamat po, Mr. President. Thank you to our distinguished Deputy Minority Floor Leader. Mr. President, the uh, Minority Leader would like to be recognized. I our distinguished uh, Minority Floor Leader is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just to make uh, of record my no vote to the Bicameral Conference Committee report, and the explanation can be found in the interpolation that I just, uh, uh, that we just underwent, uh, Mr. President. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. President, uh, I just want to say a short word of thanks to you. To our majority leader, our Senate President Temp, our minority leader, all the vice chairpersons, and all of our colleagues, and to our Senate staff, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you to our uh, hardworking uh, chair of the uh, Finance Committee, Mr. President. Senator Grace Poe would like to be recognized. Mr. Senator President. Grace Poe is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I would just like to put on record. Uh, my thanks uh, and admiration to the Chairman of the Committee on Finance for hurdling uh, so many issues. I know uh, in his heart what he really wanted and he, he fought for the best interests of the Senate, the Senate position. And well, fortunately and unfortunately, there are two uh, bodies to consider. It's just not the, the Senate alone. Um, but for the most part, I, I thank him for accepting our amendments that are really pro-people, especially in, in, in my, con my concern for the drivers and also for, for transportation. So thank you, I think he always handled himself uh, very evenly and uh, calmly and uh, diplomatically. So that's, that's all, Mr. President. Thank you so much, Mr. President, to our Vice Chair, and uh, we thank her for ably steering the budget of the DOTR and the DICT. So we have the Libring Sakai pro projects and the bike lanes under her, among other things, under her leadership, Your Honor. And I'd like to also personally thank our chairperson, not just for the hard work that he's done, but also for increasing the budget for specialty hospitals. 
Maraming salamat. That is your ba- initiative, Mr. President. Yes, uh, thank your, you. Your instructions to me were crystal clear. And uh, Senator you. JV, former chairman of the Committee on Health, Senator Pia, yes. the majority leader, all of you were very insistent that this must be prioritized in next year's budget, Your Honor. Thank you so much for that. I hope the President, I hope you will communicate that to the President because I know you shared, it was a shared advocacy and campaign promise of yours, Mr. President. For the regional health centers, regional specialty centers. Thank you so much. Mr. President, the Senate uh, President Pro Tempore, Senator Lauren Legarda, would like to make a manifestation. I move that she be recognized, Mr. President. Our distinguished Senate President Pro Tempore, uh, the beautiful, Tita Ganda of the Senate, oh, Senator Lauren Legarda is recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Allow me to manifest my heartiest, heartiest and sincerest congratulations first to you. This is the first budget of your leadership. And of course, to our hardworking, uh, fair, cool, uh, never uh, pressured or never showed the pressure at least on him, um, diligent, brilliant, Chair of the Senate Committee, Senator Sunny Angara. All the vice chairs, all the members of the Senate, including the very important two-member committee of the minority, or the two ma- two man um, members of the of the uh, minority. This is a collective effort of everyone. The first of the administration and the first of this leadership. Uh, the hardworking secretariat, as well as the LBRMO, and what really. Uh, what I am thankful about is that we are able to fund existing laws that previously perhaps were not funded. First, the Tertiary Education Act, I believe is fully funded. The universal health care to the best of our ability was funded. You mentioned the specialty hospitals. And to a certain extent, although limited, the MSME laws, which will be a good support for our pandemic recovery. Environment and climate were also uh, supported and climate tag to a certain extent, but of course, in the next year's budget, it could be better. So it's a best effort budget of everyone, considering the limitations in resources and limitations in time. And I would once again want to congratulate you, Mr. President, you. and the chair, and all of us here for this collective effort of passing a budget. Uh, not on time, way ahead of time, with a very energetic and consensus-building majority leader. I hope he hears this. So with that, um, (laughs) congratulations. Thank you very Uh, much. Once again, and um, LBRMO and the Secretariat, who stayed up till 2 a.m., and uh, all our staff. So we thank all of them. And this is for you, the Filipino people, para sabayan. Thank you. Thank you very much to our distinguished Senate President Pro Temp. And I'm not surprised na sinabi po ni Alex Gonzaga na lodi niya si Lauren, <laughs> Mr. President. Thank you. And uh, before we recognize Senator Villar, I know he wants to make a manifestation. I'd just like to put on record, ladies and gentlemen, that we still do have the oversight committee on uh, the confidential funds. I would like to uh, really reiterate to our distinguished colleagues that are members of that committee, we will look out how they will spend these funds. I assure our minority leader and deputy minority leader, uh, of which the, the minority leader is a part of, that we will scrutinize and make sure that the funds are well spent. And so that the next years, as uh, Senator, uh, our mi- minority leader, Senator Pimentel had said, this year we watch, we wait, we get them accountable for the funds. And next year, we can do the uh, budget deliberation once again, armed with that knowledge, if that was really, uh, truly well spent for the Filipino people. But I'd like to also thank um, our colleagues, but most especially the Secretariat, who labored very hard for uh, two weeks to be able to pass this uh, measure. And of course, um, our majority floor leader, our majority floor leader, for a job well done shepherding, shepherding this to the floor. But man, uh, Senator Manny, uh, Senator Manny, <laughs> Senator, be better. 
Villar, uh, Senator Mark Villar is uh, recognized. Mr. Senate President, I have a very, I just like to, uh, I have a question regarding for uh, Senator Angara. I just like to ask, where, where did you get the energy to complete this budget cycle with such speed and yeah. such dedication? I think and I can't I could, figure uh, it out. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I want I to know your secret. You I want to see your. I want to know your yeah. secret, Senator Sensani. Ironically, Your Honor, it's si pagatcaga. <laughs> <laughs> so I just like to thank everyone. It's my first year here in the Senate, and I just like to say to all the Senate and all the staff and everyone who works so hard. I'm so impressed with all of you. You all have my uh, deepest respect, admiration, and I'd like to wish all of you, especially Sensani. A very Merry Christmas. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Villar. Thank, Thank you to Peter. Senator Vice Chair, Senator Former Secretary Villar. Much after, appreciated, Your Honor. Mr. President, after the Deputy Majority Leader of the Senate made his statement, the other Deputy Majority Leader would like to make a short manifestation as well. I move that he be recognized, Mr. President. Yes, our distinguished colleague from San Juan, Senator J.V. Is he Vice also the better... They're One both. Or? They're both <laughs> excellent you, legislators. <laughs> thank you, uh, Senator JV. Thank you, uh, Mr. Senate President. Anyway, I just like to commend our colleague, my uh, my schoolmate, and proud of you, bro. Uh, thank you. We sir. are really indeed the uh, hope to become men for others. And uh, given the limited fiscal space, he was able to really uh, make sure that the more important government programs are funded. Of course, first of all, the specialty centers, which uh, the Senate President himself really pushed. I'm really happy to, to let you know that from two billion to four billion, now it's six billion. So our goal, the goal of having um, lung, kidney, and heart center in uh, strategic areas in the country will become a reality in the soonest possible time. So thank you very much, uh, thank you. Chairman uh, Sunny, for making this. Uh, a dream um, uh, possible and very uh, probably in two three years mr uh, mr president we will have this uh, goal become uh, we will realize this goal as also um, um, instructed by the president and likewise um, i know it's a difficult i've been fighting for this uh, um, for the several years you know that the infrastructure the railway projects um, we um, it was uh, we had the commitment from the from the chairman that uh, it will be sourced to the unprogram funds because my concern, is, uh, Mr. President, is that we might shoulder the financial charges in case uh, we, weren't, we will not be able to, uh, to come up with our end of the deal of the, of the right of way and others. So, um, Senator Zani, our, vice, our chairman, already assured that uh, in case needed, it will be in the unprogram fund, uh, Mr. President. So, with that, again, I commend my... Uh, my uh, co Virian, my uh, my schoolmate. Uh, again, thank you for. Uh, I'm proud of you, Brad, for being uh, a true man for others. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank, thank you, you for a very Mr. touching uh, manifestation. I thank the gentleman from San Juan, who we welcome back to the Senate. One of the hardest working senators, staying from start of the working day to the end. Uh, and he, Senator Pia, Senator Bongo, made uh, uh, good um, good amendments to our. Uh, guided us in amending uh, the DOH budget led by our senior vice chair, Senator Pia, of course. So definitely, uh, this is a worthy uh, endeavor. I think that uh, maybe when we look back on this many years from now, we can say that uh, at least our batch of senators uh, tried to improve on the health system of the country and uh, we tried to make the budget a good, a good Mr. President. Uh, one thing I would like to say for the record, this is a very hard-working Senate, the 19th Congress. I have not seen in many years, at 2 in the morning, we have the total number of 17, 18 senators present, working very hard to pass the budget. I'm very proud of all of you, and I thank you for your service for our people. Thank you, Chairman, for the job well done. Thank you to the Minority Floor Leader for being our fiscalizers. Thank you for all our colleagues for the wonderful amendments that you've done to make this a responsive budget, a budget for national reconstruction. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, for your leadership. Thank you. Yes, Mr. President, let me uh, say it again. Leadership matters. Uh, it is Thank you. Because of you, Mr. Uh, President, Senate President Zubiri, 
who led the way, Mr. President, for all of us to be here. And uh, records will uh, bail me out, Mr. President. We have yet to experience back-to-back, 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning, <coughs> Mr. President. Yes. And because we are all energized seeing you up there, and of course, the uh, chairperson and our distinguished colleagues, ite text ko na lang si chairperson ang gara ng message ko sa kami, Mr. President. <laughs> Mr. President, but kidding aside, uh, we congratulate our dear colleagues and this uh, August uh, Chamber, most especially our staff, Mr. President, yeah. na hindi kayang tawaran yung sakripisyong ginawa nitong uh, mga nakaraang linggo, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. With that, with that, Mr. President, I move that we adjourn the session until 3 o'clock in the afternoon of Tuesday, December 6, 2022. I so move, Mr. President. There being no objection, the session is adjourned until 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Tuesday, December 6. Maraming, maraming salamat po. Please stay safe and healthy. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, dear colleagues.